when I was a little boy at the beach, I was building houses in the sand. And when they were building new houses, you know, we'd get on our bikes and we'd walk around this construction and think, oh, there's that's going to be a kitchen and that's a bathroom. And I would have done this. And I'm talking about I'm like eight years old. right? <laughs> so it was always in me. I had a kind of strange path. When I was in high school, my dad thought it would be good to encourage me for architecture. And he dropped me off at a friend's practice. And he was an old guy, ornery guy, and he was um, designing like boring nursing homes. And he was like, kid, why would you want to do this? This really is the worst thing. And he, he kind of freaked me out and I turned away from it. And I didn't know what to do. And I had gotten an A plus in biology. So I thought, well, I don't know, maybe I should be a doctor. I wanted maybe a shrink. And which now you know me enough that it would be hard for me to keep my mouth shut listening to people without saying, just do this. <laughs> I dropped the bio and picked up fine art. Even when I was in the second grade, my parents gave me private art lessons. I, I did have an affinity for art. And that's what I graduated with. And Brandeis is only liberal arts, but I, I'm so happy that was my path because all of those things make me who I am and define what kind of a designer I am. I, you know, I've also produced theater. And so I know about set design and, and sometimes we think of our clients as characters that we're creating the backgrounds. So I, I feel like everything I've done leads to who I am. And I, I think it's really important. I know there were students in grad school and all they'd done their whole lives was architecture. And they're very one dimensional. And I don't think their design was as interesting. The coolest thing that happened was my final critique at Harvard was my teacher was Frank Gehry. He brought in Philip Johnson, Charles Guathamy, and Harry Cobb for my MPA. And that was incredible, incredibly nervous making. <laughs> and Philip, Philip said to me, you know, come see me in New York, which I did. And he wasn't hiring. And he said, you know, I think you're talented. Just use my name however you want and say I recommended you. So I sent out like 30 letters to the top architects and said, Philip Johnson said I should call you. And 30 people gave me an interview. <laughs> I always think um, an architect is a little bit like a doctor because for most clients, what we do is a bit mystical and they have to trust us and they don't have the experience to change things. I mean, you know, little things, but since we get to know them, how they live and we understand the space, that that's kind of, um, you know, just this thing they don't muck around with us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, interiors, people have a lot more experience you know, whether it's color or, you know, I don't want that, my grandmother had that, or there's so much, you know, baggage, good and bad. And uh, so it it is a more hands-on, you are more intimate. And, you know, again, you're dealing with their bedrooms and their bathrooms and their kids' rooms. So it's very intimate. And I do feel like, you know, my impetus that I wanted to be a shrink comes into play on a daily basis. I gave an interview and I said, someone asked me why I wanted to do what I do. And I said, one of the things is I wanted a job where every single day is different. Like I didn't want to have to just sit at a desk. You know, if I came out of school and worked at a firm that was doing skyscrapers, I might spend two years doing one fire stare and I didn't want to be that person. So when I'm having a really bad day, he'll say to me, well, it's, every day is different, <laughs> but they can't all be perfect.
one of the things I told the students was it's really important to sketch. You know, they, if you start with the computer, especially if you're a newbie, you, you don't understand the scale of things. And I can see that in the projects, you, you know, when you're drawing, as you, you know, get more experience, you literally have it in your fingers. We had a drawing teacher in school and he just said, every time, wherever you are, I want your hand always moving. And it's, it's stuck in my head. I'm always sketching and even doodling, things come out of it. We really do affect people's lives. You know, there's all these studies about color and and um, that literally good interior design can lengthen your life, which is incredible. So, you know, I feel like I'm contributing. It's not, we're just not making pretty spaces. We're making people's lives better. I get up around six. So the time between six and nine is the most valuable of the day for me you know ideally I exercise sometimes but it's when I really you know the phone's not ringing and I'm not getting texts and I whatever I need to do or sketch that's the best time for me People always ask me between the product design and, and architecture, like, do I have a favorite? And the answer is no. Um, for me, that whole process of going from drawing to reality is like thrilling. I, you know, if, if you could stand inside something you've created, how that is the coolest thing. I, I and um, the thing about products is, I love designing them. They come to market quick, you know, an architecture project might take a few years and a product could be anything from six months to two years, but to hold it in your hand. And the coolest thing for me is, and I see it constantly on Instagram, it's how other designers incorporate my designs into their projects. And people reach out to me and I've gotten to know people and it's just so cool because it could be modern or traditional. and seeing things in magazines and um so i i just i really love it all I, I just feel lucky that every day i like what i'm doing and i think that many people feel that way